Thanks for joining us for this very special announcement. We are here in one of the most significant places of contemporary music. So welcome everyone to the Avo Pert Center. The Avo Pert Center is not just home of composer Avo Pert. It's also a concert hall with great acoustics. It's a place of silence. It's a place of inspiration. The Avo Pert Center is built in the middle of a forest uh, framed by the Baltic Sea on both sides. And we feel very honored to be here today, and we feel very honored that we got the opportunity to create something very beautiful with musicians coming from Northern Europe to create something that is very outstanding, that we've worked on for a very, very long time. So I don't want to spend the time too long. Let's see what it is. So, we are very proud to announce Salu. And Salu is recorded here in the Avo Pert Center. And it includes very near and intimate kind of portraits of various solo instruments and ensembles. And it draws a very beautiful contrast also to Tallinn, which has a very wide sound. Um, yeah, Salu offers close-ups of various acoustic instruments as well as vocals. And those sounds found its way into something that we call close-up soundscapes. And those close-up soundscapes can be used to uh, write very contemporary and emotive film and TV scoring. Being here in this space was an absolute dream. The whole place has a kind of a spirit and an atmosphere that I think we have managed to capture, at least in part, in this collection. You have to be here to really believe it. I hope some of you watching this maybe get the chance to come here one day. but. I think without the centre, we never could have got this group of artists together. And what we have is a, an absolutely exceptional group of artists. Um, we're going to be meeting some of them in a bit. We'll do a couple of talks with them and find out how they enjoyed the process. But very much, first of all, without our first guest, none of this would have been possible. So I'd like to introduce Michael Piat. Thank you. Welcome, Michael. So, could you maybe, for people who don't know you as well as we do, just introduce yourself? Yes, uh, so I, my background is in film music and I've been a music producer, film music producer and music editor for 20 something years um, in many places. And um, until I found um, myself in making the Arupart Center my focus. So this was a long process over the last 15 years uh, from concept to reality. And here we are. Yeah. And we've been working together for a while because we did the Talon collection together um, two years ago. 
The Avo Pet Center, I mean, it's, it's difficult to describe if you haven't actually been here, but maybe you could try it. Uh, sure. Uh, I think that when we look at the music um, of Avo Pet, then we hear a lot of silence. And the center is really representing that. So the idea of a, a visitor coming here, uh, we are trying to get that person to experience exactly that and take time for oneself. And we're here in Lao Lasma, which is very, very close to Tallinn. Um, and uh, the I remember the first time we came here, there was the, the idea was born to do some kind of recording here. Right, because uh, we've just finished off the Tallinn sections. And uh, in that library, we had um, a big space and a, a very different approach. And it was clear that in order to move forward, we wanted to also, also capture something that is wide ranging in contrast to Tallinn. So the space here allowed for the right sonic approach when it comes to being more chamber-like. Um, and the musicians that we are going to be bringing here today will tell us a little bit about um, the approach, but in, in actual fact, the, the closeness and the intimacy of the sound is something that was, I think, the core. And one, one of the ideas you had that was the, at the very start of the sessions, we had this mm -hmm. workshop. Maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Uh, for us, it was very important to um, not just have a printed score of something. This time we want to um, get everyone involved into some kind of creative process. So, um, of course, we had some kind of, of basic concept in mind that still ha gives us the freedom also for everyone to improvise and to, to put some creativity into, into the sessions. And you hear this also in, in, uh, in yeah, many patches that you see, especially, for example, for the choir, where we have very interesting uh, textures and very very interesting kind of articulations or also from the percussion sessions where we experimented with with water in combination with the tubular bells or with with uh, other percussion instruments and this is very interesting because um, it's um, a more inclusive concept of, of this entire creation of this library. Yeah right because I think that the playing and the participation of a player changes completely if one works out the idea and the content together with the people involved. Absolutely. So I think I think we can hear the difference. Yeah it was this I mean this was I remember the workshop but it was kind of new ground for us as well. I think we've done this to that extent before. Right. And it also it works very well in combination with the overall idea of the Abo Pert Center because the Abo Pert Center is not just a concert hall that we have here. It also has an exhibition and has a lot of community spaces here and um, it brings together people. And I think this is where the word center is coming from as well, to, to bring people together and to, to experience contemporary music. Yeah. And I think almost everybody we selected for this collection has some kind of connection to the Abo Pert Center, correct? Right. Uh, Almost. We are here at the hall of the Arpad Center and uh, we organize concerts and co concerts are being organized also by others. And I guess most, if not all, um, have had already the possibility to be here and perform um, mm -hmm. at an earlier stage. So yes, there is that con connection. Yeah, but besides that, it's also simply such a beautiful space when you, when you are here in the, in the concert hall and you have those large windows out there and you are in the, in the center of the forest. This, is, this alone is so inspiring. I think this also helps to, to uh, develop this library. Yeah, the, I mean, the forest is a big part of the concept of the center, mm -hmm. which brings me to, can you explain the name Salu? Right, um, we are um, in a place that is called, we are near Lohu Salu. Lohu Salu is, um, um, Salu means the woods not forest, but the woods. So our road is called Kella Salo. The property is called Kella Salo. Um, so Salo is, is something that is kind of um, part of this, this space and needless to say the forest around us um, contributes to this synonym. So that's how we ended up with, with um, bringing Salo into the name of this particular library because it, yeah. it only is in the DNA of where we are and what we do. Walking around the center, the, the forest is omnipresent is always there in the courtyards looking out of the windows and interestingly you, if you watch the interview videos for, for this collection most of the artists that we talk to they they mention the forest people experience this as part of the center and it's a really wonderful thing okay I think it's probably about time to take a look into the box and uh, hear some of the sounds so it's time to introduce our next guest Let's yeah. do it.
let's take a look at the sounds inside Salo. We've been joined by Claire Wicks. Uh, we brought Claire to Talent to play us through and take us through and give us an overview of this new collection. So maybe I'll hand over to you. All right, so let's open this up. Uh, this library is broadly divided into two sections. We've got the acoustic recorded instruments and then the processed sound designed patches. So starting with the strings, in here you've got the string quartet, uh, solo viola and solo cello. Uh, voices is next. We've got the female ensemble uh, split into main and special articulations um, and they are special. Um, then the male ensemble, same. A solo alto and a solo basso. Plucked and keys is the carnel, harp and piano, uh, which you've got as a combined patch played all together as well as solo instruments. And then we have the experimental per percussion. That's quite extensive. And um, I can tell you when you see things like tam-tam and timpani, it's not how you've ever heard those instruments played before. And then the processed patches, that's also split into a few different folders. Um, I see evolving these sort of longer ones which go on a journey. Uh, we've got dream state, tense, dark and plucks, so some shorts as well. Uh, so broadly that's what you've got in the box. So let's get straight into the strings, um, starting with the string quartet and I'm going to load up one of my favourites, the irregular flybys. And I'll just start on a single note with these so you can really hear it. really get the, the texture of the bow on the string. Yeah, this, this is really also the difference when you compare this, for example, what we did with Time or also with, with, uh, with the Tallinn Library. We have this very wide sound. Um, here we went really, really close to the instrument and also this, this room is simply perfect for this because when you stand here in the, in the, in the, in the hall, it's, it's a rather uh, large hall, but um, the sound is very dry, very direct and very focused. Next, I just want to show uh, some of the solo viola. So we've got so solo viola and solo cello. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the irregular repetitions. I think this is another beautiful, close texture. So moving on to the voices, um, and we've got the female and male ensembles and then a solo, alto and basso. Um, so I'm going to go straight into the special articulations of the female ensemble and show the buzzing hum. one I really want to show is the cascading vowels and I love this because you just hear these tiny pinpricks of light coming out of it um...
Yeah, this, this idea for this also came up during the recording session um, and it's very interesting because every singer, they are standing next to each other and they had their, their um, they sung their note after each other like in cascades, so ba 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 ba, and therefore you, you get this very interesting kind of, of movement within the, within the sound, yeah. Yeah, exactly, it's never static. Yeah. Um, we've also, moving on to the male ensemble, just to look at some of the special articulations. There's so much in here. Um, I'll show some of the irregular repetitions. A little bit of the solo alto. Um, I just want to show the irregular syllables. There's a few different ones here, um, and some almost have um, a folk type mm -hmm. tone to my ear. Um, just show. really hear the um, Gregorian chant yeah. Yeah, background. I already get images in my head oh. about yeah. the forest and everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, the solo basso, actually, I wanted to show something that I'd never heard before, which is these irregular overtones. Mm -hmm. This is really amazing, I think. <laughs> The overtones, if you have more than one note at the same time, then the overtones kind of dance with mm -hmm. each other and you get these whole new patterns. But I think this also came from the singer during the recording sessions because we, we had no script for this, but he was able to deliver this and we thought, oh, this sounds very, very interesting. Yeah. And there are not many uh, singers who can deliver this kind of sound, this throat singing. And um, yeah, I'm, it's, it's also one of my favorite patches. Um, all right, moving on to the next section of the library, we've got Plucked and Keys. So we've got a combined patch of the canal, harp and piano. So you've got the super soft piano, um, you've got the harp, which is sort of somewhere in between, and then the more direct attack of the canal. Um, I think they work together really nicely because you've almost got these three layers at the same mm -hmm. time, sort of combined. And we recorded them together as well, right? We didn't yeah. just record them individually and stack them up. I, mm. I guess most of uh, our viewers won't recognize the canal, yeah? but mm. we will talk about this a little later, yeah? yeah. Um, I really love these irregular drops. These are a little more sparse, and so you can build up um, maybe even quite a discordant chord. And um, because it's not all attacked at the same time, then I think it just creates a really nice interplay. Uh, let's start. So to come to the canal, um, I'll just play some of the sustains so you can just hear that completely on its own.
It's beautiful. The tail just goes on and on, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, moving on to the solo harp. Uh, let's hear some of these irregular octave drops. I think this is another one of those beautiful textures that you can kind of build a piece out of almost nothing. Um, Really, um, these things are things you can't really recreate. The way a performer does it yeah. is very unique and specific to the technique of that instrument as well. Yeah. It's, it's really special to have them. I'm going to skip forward to the percussion. There's a huge variety in this percussion, mm. um, so I'll pick and choose a little bit. The percussion, well, normally when you think of percussion, especially with uh, sort of film music, it's this big, booming, thunder drum percussion. And in keeping with this collection, the percussion here is actually very, very quiet. And uh, we had a very, very special performer here for the percussion. And uh, we, he's, he focuses specifically on the quietest sounds he can find, because they're the ones that really excite him. Yeah. <laughs> and especially also experimenting sounds. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I mentioned before also with water and uh, the tubular bells and then the pitch tunes and all those, those, those little things that you won't find in, uh, in a regular orchestral percussion library or something. Yeah. Well, since you've mentioned it, let's hear some of the tubular bell mm -hmm. in the water bucket. And um, I'll just say really listen out for the tail of the sound on this. So yeah, welcome to Haunted House. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a natural way of bending the pitch yes. then, that as the water moves? Yes, yeah, there's, there's exactly. There's no uh, in the moment where the, the, the water touches mm. the tubular bell, and that, in that moment um, it gets shortened, basically, and then the yeah. tune changes. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I wanted to show the bowed um, textures on the crotals, um, just because I love the fragility of this. And last thing on the percussion, um, the timpani. Probably not what you expect from timpani because there's um, bowls on timpani mallets or cymbals on timpani bowed. I'll play some of that. Yeah, this is where the experimental side of things kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you get the resonance of the exactly, timpani yeah. added and to that. We, we, we also um, experimented with changing the tuning while, uh, while the, the sound is ringing. Therefore, you can also change the tuning. It's very interesting what ah. you can do with, um, with a timpani and putting things on the timpani and playing it in various ways. So moving on to the process patches. And I'll start with one of these tense ones called drip stones. It's, it's interesting you picked this sound first because I also thought it's one of my favorite sounds uh, from the processed ones um, because our aim with, uh, with the uh, soundscapes that we are creating here is the same like with the, uh, with the raw material to keep it very close, this kind of close-up soundscapes. 
um, to, to have it really upfront. And this, this patch is a very good example for this. Yeah, some of that's so close. I feel like it's almost like on my eardrum. <laughs> exactly, <know>? yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so moving on to another one I really like, Upright Dreaming. <laughs> Meditative sound. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and even very mm. soft and um, and direct. It's a very beautiful sound patch as well. We 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 did a lot of sound design patches, I have to say, and uh, only the very best ones went into the library. Um, the next one I want to show is interception. How that opens out yeah, yeah. as you change the model. Uh, let's hear Grotto. Voices from the Dark. dig into the dark uh, folder here and um, this one's called fever dream i like the modulation when yeah. you can really change the soundscape to push it into an entire different direction. Yeah? So thank you very much, um, Claire, this is wonderful. Thanks so much. Yes. Now, the choir in the Salo, I think, is really exceptional. And the fact that we got Vox Clamantis in here to do this is really, we're, we're so proud that they, that they did this with us. The Vox Clamantis have an absolutely unique sound. As far as I can, as, as far as I'm aware, there's no one else that really sounds like this. Their repertoire includes early music, Gregorian chants, uh, obviously the work of Arvo Pert, and uh, there are a number of Estonian composers that have wrote, written music specifically for this choir. And uh, they've also won a Grammy Award and numerous other awards, including, a, I think, a very special Estonian Culture Award. So they're an absolutely exceptional choir, and we're very pleased that we uh, managed to record them like this. Um, so we'd like to welcome them, not the entire choir, unfortunately. We don't have the space, but Janek, Susanna and Sander, Thank you for coming here today. We, we met early this year when we did the recording sessions and uh, I've, I'm, I was very aware of your work and I remember the first sessions with Michael where we talked about, okay, who, who do we want to record? And Vox Clamantis was the first name on the list. And then when you said yes, there was a party in the office. We were so, <laughs> <laughs> we were so pleased. And uh, the, the, for people who don't know your work maybe, can you describe a little bit, like when, when, 
when you're traveling, when you're on tour and you have to describe and explain what the choir is about, what do you tell people? So we started uh, 26 years ago only with Gregorian chant and only with uh, men voices. And then uh, little by little we uh, had a lot of first Estonian composers who wanted to write music for us. And then we started to sing more and more contemporary music also. So now, nowadays we sing old music, Gregorian chant, medieval music, and, and also a lot of contemporary music. And certainly we have also mix uh, group, so six female voices and uh, eight men voices. The, the focus on Gregorian chant is very interesting. So how does, how does the Gregorian chant style or influence affect the way you perform contemporary music? Oh, a lot. A lot. Okay. Yeah. I think it's uh, the phrasing. We always try to like, phrase really naturally. And um, every rehearsal we, we practice some Gregorian chant also. So singing together is another thing that comes from that. Yeah. We're certainly a very unique sound. I mean, I think I first heard you on the, the Deer's Cry, which was a very successful record uh, with Arvo Pertz music. No one likes blowing their own trumpet, especially not in Estonia. But it's worth saying, you, you've won a Grammy, you've won so many awards, you've been on so many best of year lists over the years. Uh, what, what's maybe the most important award that you've won? Or the, the one that's closest to your heart, maybe? <laughs> Janek, maybe. I don't know all the awards we have. I, I don't know, but uh, what, what does it mean to have an award? That means that uh, uh, your message is important for somebody, and uh, I think they understand our message, our, our, our music. Like, um, dreamt of uh, being part of the group, then I never would have imagined that it would actually happen. And then I realized that. Um, they're not like professional singers. They just have really great sense of music and they just are unique themselves. And that, uh, that is what like, brings, I think, the Vox Clementis sound, like uh, the sense and uh, just your, uh, your self-uniqueness. Yeah. When we released our talent collection, we already talked about Estonian singing culture and the importance of being in a choir and how many people are actually in choirs. It's something that's very, very special, I think, and very unique to the area. When we were talking about the concept, we talked a lot about the inward journey, which was kind of a phrase we used to describe what, what we were trying to achieve. How was the experience of recording these sounds and giving us your voices and working with orchestral tools in this incredible space? It was quite weird and new and new, unique experience to just make sounds and uh, to sing on some vowels or no different. context. Yeah, just no context. And stuff. you really have to like find the emotion. Um, and also a little bit the improvisation. Yeah. The... yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I, I also remember that we that we do uh, uh, that we made those kind of uh, prime numbers that we sing that that um, yeah that became kind of a texture or something, maybe Claire, you... you yeah, let's hear some of those. Yeah. I think it's, it's the prime numbers are, are brilliant, yeah. yeah. Now, we, we should also say that these guys haven't heard what we've done with their voices yet. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is the premiere. You have to see their reactions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love hearing those yeah. sort of individual uh, voices come across. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you like to hear some more? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, let's play some more. Please, I would like to hear myself first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do some uh, male ensemble then um, of the special articulations. Um, let's hear the irregular drifting. Almost sounds like a, a folk 
um, sound uh, sort of timbre to it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what the, that's it? what these guys wanted also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something like a bit like folk and mysterious. <laughs> but, but do you recognize that that is Vox Lamantis when you hear this? Yes, I think we, we so. We do yes. recognize yeah. some voices, yeah. And because we, we yeah. thought about this, right? When we when we went through the patches and then Graham said, yeah, that's exactly like the recording. So um, that the tone of it, the the yeah. there is something very specific about the choir that is apart from the notes, also in the in the voice itself. Yes. Yeah. We can't maybe, do anything about it, sorry. Mm -hmm. Maybe it, this is also one point of our ensemble uh, idea that we, we don't uh, want to cultivate a very professional sound of professional voice, but mm -hmm. to sing a most natural mm -hmm. voice, to, to keep everyone the, her natural uh, voice. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is also very, this is very important for, for me and for, for us. Yes, it is. Maybe we hear one more sound? Yeah. Um, let's do some humming. Crescendos humming. This is still the male choir. like how you do hear that sort of um, individual tone of voice. Can you hear your own voice in that? I think I recognize myself at, at, at some t uh, like uh, uh, keys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we then we then we got it right. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming in to talk to us again. Thank you for doing the recordings with us. Really, it was a wonderful experience. I hope it was fun for you. I hope it was as much fun for you as it was for us. Absolutely. It was. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So the kannel is a traditional Estonian instrument, and it only exists in Estonia. We expect that most of you watching this probably haven't seen this instrument before so we're going to play a short clip to give you an idea of what this instrument looks like what it sounds like and how it's played so please welcome anna lisa ella uh, a wonderful Kannel player who recorded the Kannel with us. Can you maybe just introduce yourself for people who maybe don't know your music? Yes, uh, hello. I'm a Kannel player uh, and I, I have a classical background. So I studied as a normal classical musician from the beginning from the children's music school until the music uh, high school and even in doctoral studies. So I focused more on Baroque music and also my doctoral theses are about Baroque music. Now, I first became aware of your music through your collaboration with Vox Clamantis on the, the Suspended Half of Babel, which was an incredible, incredible record. Um, have you worked with Vox Clamantis a lot? Yes, yeah. uh, surprisingly, um, almost 20 years. So the first project, what I did with them, I played the uh, hand drums. <laughs> I don't remember when I started to play Kanel with them, but we have did quite uh, many projects with this choir. Wonderful. It's great. <laughs> and are you also connected to the kind of the Ivo Pet Center? Have you played here before? I have played here uh, several concerts. Uh, it's a very nice hall and I have a a special program where I play uh, together with uh, Tavi Kerikme, who is a uh, keyboard player. And we have a very soft, very the, the most quiet program ever. <laughs> so there is a uh, clavichord and historical canals and psaltery. So it's, and this hall is perfect because you don't have any background noise. <laughs> very cool. So 
what people want to know is what is the kanel, what makes it special? Kanel, it's, uh, it's a hidden pearl from Estonia. So it's, um, it has very long history. So first it was a small instrument with five or six strings. And actually we cannot follow how far the history goes, but the old runo songs from Estonian folklore, there is kanel mentioned, so we know that it exists. And uh, then it grows and grows and grows, and until uh, 20, in the middle of 20th century they needed suddenly uh, the full chromatic scale on the instrument. So it was national competition uh, to build a chromatic cabinet. And it lasted, uh, let's say, seven years. And then uh, the first chromatic candle teacher, Eik Toivi, and the instrument maker, Vaino Mala, invented this uh, cross strung uh, cannel in uh, 1952. So we celebrate 70 years of this invention of chromatic cannel this year. So originally it was just tuned in diatonic? Uh, it was either. tuned in diatonic, but they, uh, of course, they searched the possibilities to add chromatic scale before, mm -hmm. until they got this idea to, to cross the strings, mm -hmm. because then you can reach easily to every string, and you can play all kinds of music. But um, uh, Kanel has relatives uh, in Latvia, Lithuania, in Finland, and some part of Russia. And uh, in the middle of 20th century, every country they searched this possibility to add chromatic scale. And it ended up that every country did it different way. Mm -hmm. So only here in Estonia, we have uh, one string for one pitch. So this is very unique now. I, I was quite fascinated also how flexible the instrument are and how much you can play with it actually because normally you think like instrument like this is quite limiting mm -hmm. in certain ways but you you don't hear it on the canal so I think this is yeah I find that we have a lot of possibilities because mm -hmm. of the cross strings and because we have the full chromatic scale and I also believe that we haven't discovered all the possibilities yet. Mm -hmm. So the, the future of Kanel looks bright. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's take a listen. I think this is theoretically the first time you're hearing this too. So I hope you like it. Shall we start with the sustains then so you can hear it in its purest form? Yeah. <laughs> Sent you? <laughs> it sounds great, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and also the, the magic of sampling because Claire is a flutist, yeah. <laughs> so a canal played by a flutist yeah. <laughs> on the on keys. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Could, you, could you play some of the experimental things as well? Yeah, let's hear the long crescendos. I assume you couldn't do four notes tremble at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a kind of orchestra then. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those sounds combined also with, with strings or uh, with the vocal sounds that we have heard so far. So That's maybe worth a listen to, because we, we got you to play together with Fiedler and with Lise. So there has been harp, um, it has been um, an upright piano that we prepared in a way that, is, um, that it dampened the strings. And we had a canal playing together. Yeah. And even the harp was played with two harps at mm -hmm. the same time. So, really? Yeah. Shall we hear some of the um, irregular arpeggios of the combined? Mm -hmm. That would be lovely, yeah.
so warm, yeah. the sound all together. Well, thank you for doing this with us, really. It's, I think this is the secret gem, the, the <laughs> pearl of the collection. So you've just heard the piano that we mentioned earlier in combination with the harp and with, with the kanna. And when we realized we needed a piano in this collection, obviously we had to think about this a bit because we were aiming for this very kind of introspective, the inward journey sound and we realized we needed a soft piano. We also realized we needed a very special kind of player, someone who was gonna really sort of feel the instrument and be on board with the ideas that we had. So we looked around for the, to find the right player, and we found a young man called Fiedle Nero, who is a composer and pianist and multi-instrumentalist from Norway. So please welcome our next guest, Fiedle Nero. So, as you can see, we've changed things around a little bit, and Claire's now sitting over here, and we're joined by Fetla Nairo. Um, Fetla, maybe you can introduce yourself for those who are not familiar with your music. Yeah, so I am uh, an artist from Norway, a pianist. Uh, I started playing the piano when I was around nine years, or eight years old, and uh, I did everything from classical music to jazz and playing bands, but in the midst of all that, um, I started creating my own music. Uh, it was what felt right to me, what really re resonated. So I chose to follow that and I'm still doing it. Um, so right now I have released uh, two solo albums and recently finished my third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, we, we looked for a long time to find a pianist that fit the profile that we were looking for and we were very, very, very happy when someone suggested you. And, uh, how was, how was the whole experience of kind of getting the invitation to come to the Avo Pet Center and uh, the, coming here and doing this project with us? How did, that, mm. how did that feel for you? To me, it was, of course, very exciting. I have um, I've been very, uh, very familiar with, with the work of Avo Pet, of course. So um, to work here at the center was a real privilege to me. Tell us a little bit about what, what you did to the piano and what we made you do mm. <laughs> during the recording session. <laughs> yeah, so what we did with the piano was install some sort of fabric um, between the strings and the hammers. So we are s sort of softening the sound and amplifying all the um, analog sound of the piano there, yeah. Yeah, I also had experience that um, that, that you are pretty much into, into the felt thing, into preparing the, the piano. Um, not in the usual way, because mm. we've heard a felt piano quite a lot already, but um, you're experimenting a lot about the sound that you get yeah. out of this acoustic instrument, right? Yeah. And for my playing, I normally play very soft, like uh, so soft that it can be very challenging in a live setting and a recording setting. Uh, but it's just a part of my playing style and who I am as a person. I was very, I, I was very settled on a thought that I wanted to bring my style into this and that we try to um, um, copy my playing as, as precise as possible. Yeah. Um, so uh, to me that meant playing piano the way I am used to, playing soft and really dig in the keys and trying to get it, get it as precise as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an odd process because I, mean, we, we, I, I think I talked earlier about saying okay, you have the player, you have the instrument, you have the room. And these three factors combined to, mm. to create something special. And it's, it's quite surprising because you'd think that if it's just one note at one time, anybody could do that. But it, mm. it does make a massive difference who is actually playing the instrument. It does. You, um, you sort of have to really know the instrument. And I felt also when we were done that I knew the, that specific piano from a whole new perspective inside because I really digged in the keys and tried to yeah, bring out the best of it, I think. Could you maybe sort of play us a little bit of the piano, um, maybe one or two patches, so we can hear what it sounds like? Sure. Perfect.
very, very, very soft sound. Mm, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, is, that's just the pure piano, correct? Mm, yeah, okay. the normal, yeah, pure piano. Okay. Are there any other patches that you could maybe play for us quickly? Yeah. We wanted to make this kind of piano swarm sound. Um, so I want to showcase that. Perfect. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. so it sounds like little sparks and little yeah. Yeah. Um, particles, basically. Yeah. Are you pleased with the result? How does it sound to you? I am very pleased. Um, what I'm most heavy happy about is uh, uh, the word feeling. Um, I sort of when I play when you can play so softly, it, it translates, especially to me, very good uh, when we're talking about feeling and expression. So if you're happy, then. I'm I think we've captured exactly what we want to capture. Mm -hmm. So thank you very, very much. Thanks for recording this with us and thanks for coming in today. Thank you. So thank you very much for being with us today. Salu is now available at orchestraltools.com. So check out the product page and so we will also have a very in detail walkthrough coming up uh, where you can really uh, listen to most of the patches and most of the, the instruments that we have captured. I also want to thank everyone who was involved um, in creating this wonderful instrument. Um, it, it was a long way for us uh, to do this and um, also I want to thank you, Graeme, for doing the moderation today and everyone who was involved today. Um, I wish you um, happy holidays and I wish you a happy new year and yeah, thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye. <laughs>